This video was produced by the State Historical Records Advisory Board with support from the National Historical Publications and Records Commission. For more information on the board and its activities, please visit the link in the description of this video. This brief video will introduce you to what digitization is and give you some points to consider before you start a digitization project. The word digitization means the conversion of text, pictures, or sound into a digital form that can be processed by a computer. In the case of print or photos, this usually means using a scanner to create a digital image that represents the original. For audiovisual items, this usually means using special equipment that will play the tape, disc, or film in a way that the sound and moving images can be converted to a computer file. This video will talk primarily about scanning items on paper, but some of the principles apply regardless of what you're working on. Many people have seen flatbed scanners. They're relatively inexpensive and can be found in businesses, libraries, schools, office supply stores, and even homes. Though scanners are common, scanning is actually the easy part of digitization. Managing the images you create, storing them for the long term, and sharing them with others can be a lot more challenging. Here are some things to consider before you ever put your first photograph onto a scanner. First, why are you scanning items in the first place? If you can answer this question, it can help determine your workflow. Are you scanning to avoid handling the original? To share your materials with a broader audience? To create images for exhibits or publications? To inventory your collection? You may be scanning items for multiple reasons. The ultimate goal for why you are scanning can help determine what kind of image you make. If you need to create an image that would be used on a billboard, that will require different specifications from one that is just serving as a reference for inventory. One of the first questions people ask is what should I scan first? This is especially challenging when you have a large collection of items. Here are some ways you might approach selecting items to scan. You may choose to start with the items that document underrepresented topics or communities. These will help increase knowledge and understanding in areas that have been traditionally neglected by many libraries, archives, and museums. You may choose to start with the items that are most at risk. Fragile items, though you will need to scan them carefully, benefit from having a digital image that people can reference instead of the original. Then, the original item can be safely stored away to decrease deterioration. You may choose to start with items that are most in demand. If you have a sense of the most popular items your audience looks for, these can be a great option for scanning, so you can generate enthusiasm for your digitization. On the other hand, you may know of hidden gems in your collection that you especially want to share out in a digital format. You could choose to start with these to create interest from new audiences. You may choose to start with items that have few copyright or privacy concerns. Though we won't discuss those concerns in depth in this video, you'll need to learn more about how to handle copyright and privacy if you intend to share your digitized images out with a broader audience. You may choose to start with items that could be helpful with an upcoming event or with activities that others are doing. Perhaps this is a festival or a gathering or an exhibit or a publication. To recap, here are some ways you might select what to scan. After you have an idea of what you'd like to scan first, it's best to figure out where you'll store the images you create. This may be more challenging than you'd expect. Think about these three things. Where will you store images when you're working with them? Where will you store images when you're saving them for the long term? And where will you store images if you want to share them out to a broader audience? Digital images can be pretty significant in size. You'll want to make sure you have a good amount of storage, both on your computer while you're scanning them, and also in a safe space for the long term. Always store your images in multiple places. This could be both on your local hard drive and remote drive or storage device. You never want to rely on a single copy of a digital image. If a machine crashes or a file gets corrupted, you'll lose your hard work. If you'd like to share your images out with a broader audience, there are a number of options depending on your time, availability of funds, the audience you want to reach, and your comfort level with different forms of technology. Here are some pros and cons of different ways you can share out your images. Social media. 
sharing images via a social media platform has the benefits of reaching a built-in audience. You can engage with the people already on the platform and take advantage of a free system. On the other hand, you will have very little control over how the images are organized, and it can be hard to refer back to previous posts. In addition, you have little to no control over the company in charge of the social media platform and what they choose to do with the content. Blog or Website Sharing images via a blog or personal website can give you more control over how images are presented and allow you to organize and give context to the images you're sharing. There are free and inexpensive ways to create your own blog or website. On the other hand, it's hard to rearrange collections that are shared out through a blog or website, especially as your collection becomes large. You'll need some level of comfort using a website editor and in planning out your site. Content Management Systems The choice of many institutions, content management systems are highly organized and keep track of images and the information about them. They provide the ability to search image information like title, description, or keywords. On the other hand, Content management systems are not free and may require you to have detailed technological expertise. In short, the more control and flexibility you'd like over your collection of digital images, the more resources you'll need to expend. Regardless, it's best to consider this before you start scanning, so you set up your scanning workflows to accommodate the end result. Answering these questions will help you have a more successful digitization project. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to check the other videos in this series.